Hey guys, Anthony here. It is um, Wednesday, May 8th, 2024. I'm here with my Blue Eddy AC 200P, 2000 watt uh, solar generator. And yesterday you saw me do a video from the RV, the Forest River R Pod 179. That's our uh, RV that we own. And that's a 17 foot pull behind uh, 2015 model, I believe. But very gently used um it's almost like new still uh at any rate one of my goals was uh to be off grid and to run some power some necessary power uh through the rv using the blue eddy and so one of the ways of doing that is i learned online on youtube primarily that you can do that by hooking up the 12 volt 25 amp output here which is right here on this unit and with a simple cable that blue eddy makes right here that plugs into that and screws into it okay with an xt60 connector that's how it comes i think the cable's 29 bucks it also comes with this the male version that connects to the female version but on their end it has the uh, anderson plugs so i didn't want the anderson plug so what i did was i bought a another cable a five foot piece of cable with um, the xt60 male like is on the other cord but with ring connectors a positive and a negative ring connector on the other cord because one of the ways you hook it to your rv is you open up your panel where your fuses are on the right side generally you'll have the dc side of the panel and then you just find the positive and negative hook up your ring connectors or in my case i cut the ring connectors off because the way mine is wired up, there is a screw head that you back out and then you push the wire through and then you back it back down again and it, it applies tension to the wire. So I simply clicked, uh, clicked, clipped the ring connectors off. That's what I was showing in yesterday's video. Stripped the wire a bit, um, you know, twisted it, put it through the little hole on the positive and on the negative and then just back the screws out and then tighten them back down again. And then all I did was I simply plugged in the positive, the male end of the XT60 to the female end like this. This gets screwed into the Blue Eddy like I'll show you here. So with this, you simply line up the holes. It'll, it'll line up and um, and go in whenever you're doing a video it's impossible to do it <clears throat> and once it goes in you simply screw it down so there you have the it goes in and then you just turn this blue ring here and it tightens it up and so now all I had to do was take my XT60 female hook it to the XT60 male of the ring connectors that I snipped off. Power this unit up. So you power the Blue Eddy up. You make sure the DC side is turned on. Once the DC side is turned on, now you have power running from the uh, 12 volt, 25 amp output here. I'll give you a little closer look. You have power now coming out of here. And then all I had to do was, my, when I keep my RV at the um, storage place, I kill the battery switch off. So I simply went out, turned on the battery switch so my RV battery was active. Then I just, the whole entire um, fuse panel with the DC side became active. And so I was able to show you in that video, uh, the LED lights worked, the slide worked, which I have a big slide out, that worked with no problem. And it showed you the accompanying wattage 
that the system was using and then it showed you my battery charge here which is at 81 percent right now so i have to top that off but at any rate using this blue eddy in an off-grid situation i could run <clears throat> power necessary powder like my uh, to take a shower to heat water uh, to um, turn on the lights to run the slide in and out and then I also have plugs here so I could plug in other gear here I could plug in a 12 volt refrigerator of which I have uh, two now I just bought my wife a Bouge RV one which I'm going to do another video on and I have a Dometic so I don't even have to use the refrigerator on the RV I could simply use my van or refrigerator bring it in the RV if I wanted plug it into here and run you know when the compressor's on it's like under 50 watts that it pulls and have a refrigerator slash freezer if I wanted in the RV and then with the RV itself I could plug in my TV set into here as well and basically I could do everything I want I could plug in a fan uh, the only thing I can't really do is run the rooftop AC. Uh, this is not, you know, this may be able to turn it on and activate it, but it's not going to keep it on for very long because um, this has a 4,800 watt uh, surge. But my main thing was if I'm off grid and I needed to provide power and I wasn't able to plug in to shore power, uh, I could simply use the Blue Eddy and run all the necessary things on the RV that I needed. And you guys know that on my van, which I tow my RV with, I have all the necessary electric appliances, get small gas stoves. I don't even have to use the RV stove itself um, to sustain myself. So that's one of the things I did. My next step is now to purchase another cable that I could attach to here, which an XT60 male to a 12 volt male cigarette lighter plug because I also have a Jackery Explorer 1000 that I could do the same thing I'm doing with the Blue Eddy with that unit powering the RV as well. That's only a thousand watt unit and a little less amperage that comes out of its 12 volt power source but it'll still run the lights in the RV which I'm going to show you in a future video as soon as that cable comes in it'll still run the lights probably the slide out and other gear the same thing the Blue Eddy does just not for as long of a period of time and so as long as I don't trip its breaker uh, which I think is 12 amps 10 or 12 amps uh, so it's half this one as long as I'm under the amperage I have no worries with that Jackery Explorer 1000. So that's the next unit I'm going to hook up to the RV. Now the RV cord is already hooked to the system. So I'll just have that rolled up and put aside. And when I do decide to go off battery, I just plug in and I'm, and I'm on grid. And then the next step I'm going to take you guys to is I'm going to wire, uh, uh, drill a small hole in the RV so I could run some solar cable uh, MC4 connectors into the RV and charge this Blue Eddy with some panels, which I have right there. I have 700 watts of panels sitting right there against the wall there. I could charge that Blue Eddy while I'm running the RV as well. And so these are options I want to have available to me in the event I go dry camping or have to go off grid for any length of time. I still have the ability to function in the RV. Now, albeit not with the comfort of AC, but with some fans and the roof vent open, it's definitely doable um, in most situations. So that's this video, uh, what I wanted to do today. Just let you guys uh, know that if you do have one of these Blue Eddies and you do make an investment in it, it's a wise choice to get this attachment some come with it. Mine came with the wrong one. Uh, so I had to go on and buy this one that screws on. But it is definitely a good attachment and a good addition to have where you could dump power out of the Blue Eddy and run things like uh, an RV. Um, 
So that's my video today. Just wanted to let, get that out there and let you guys see it. The next video I do, I'll show you the, uh, my wife and I tomorrow celebrate our, uh, what is it? 38th year wedding anniversary. And I bought her a Bouge RV uh, refrigerator, which is sitting right there on the floor. I have it plugged into the wall and I'm going to put some food and drink in there and, uh, surprise her with it tomorrow, um, at her office. So that's a nice little refrigerator for about 220 bucks. And, um, they come in different colors and I got her her favorite color. So that'll be another video upcoming. So thank you for watching. Thanks for, um, uh, tuning in again. This is my little box that I carry all my cords in manuals and I could just take that with the Blue Eddy and I got all the necessary power packs in here attachments to whatever solar generator I'm using okay thanks for watching take care stay ready Anthony signing off